So as I've been sifting around for different ideas and things like that, I've kind of gone through and like picked up different inspirations and things like that. And one of the things that came up that I guess is somewhat like demanded is like getting into Arch Linux. So my journey into Arch Linux really started out as Bridge Linux. And Bridge Linux is just a base Arch built custom ISO in essence is what it was. It was discon last release was back in 2015. So it's been discontinued since, but it had like four different desktops. XFCE was the main one that I used. So it worked out pretty well. And yeah, so I, this is where I really learned to configure Xorg quite a bit. And I really dove in and got comfortable with the command line. After that, it was Manjaro. Manjaro was one that I lived on for a few years, and it had a lot of cool tools for it. They do have, like, full computer systems and things like that now that you can use. And, yeah, you can buy computers with it. They provided, like, hardware management and things like that, so it made managing... Manjaro a lot easier, but they do hold a lot of things back in their stable stuff. But Manjaro is where I got a lot of my feet dirty in certain things when I eventually transitioned to Arch. I ended up taking a Manjaro build and transitioning it over to Arch. And I... It was kind of bumpy when I did it, but I eventually got it set up so that I could build move all the repos over to Arch repos, the kernel over and things like that, and reinstall everything, kind of like a transition to Artix, which is what I'm running now. But Arch is where I got a lot of my hands dirty. I did a fresh install or two eventually, and that's where I think I've kind of gotten to be really comfortable in configuring things by hand. My Arch journey kind of was started out with the desktop environments that I was used to. So working with GNOME 2 or Mate rather, and then eventually into window managers like Openbox and things like that. And I think that's where I really started to flourish was being able to build stuff with that. So if we go back actually, T, T. Um, Bridge Linux is one that I actually downloaded the ISO for. So if I go VirtualBox, I can, let's do, pick on this one for fun. Um, do, do, do. Settings, storage. And then I want to choose a disk file. I need, there's my bridge Linux. Okay. Then we're going to start it up. I'll move that over here. VirtualBox changed a lot. So when we boot into it, this is the XFCE spin. This is what bridge Linux comes in with installed on it. And once it boots up, so you've got the install thing, the readme. It's actually really, really cool because it gives you a little nice beginner's guide. You can see they use the Greybird theme. Let's see. So we can. it tells you different things that you can install. If you need the proprietary drivers for NVIDIA or a AMD, AT, yeah. Which AMD doesn't really has open source drivers now. So this is like a long time ago. So we can actually go, copy, can I run it in here? Nope, okay. So if we go to .net. So br the Bridge Linux website is not up anymore and obviously, huh. And this one, yeah. 
I don't know. Anyway, very, very cool. Um, it has VirtualBox editions installed, it seems, already. So if we go through our accessories, LeafPad, XFBurn, graphics, internet, let's see, Thunderbird, Chromium. So I've used this more than once for certain applications. So Bridge Linux ran really, really well on really, really old hardware that could hardly support Windows XP and made it really nice for certain situations where you have to check your email and the computer you were running was not the best. Let's see, XF Burn, Dead Beef for your music, Abbey Word, Numeric. So this one's built pretty light, again. This is the XFCE one, it's a lighter one, it's not the lightest, but it is the lighter one. Uh, one desktop workspace, comes with Terminator installed, which was really cool. So I can go, oh. So again, this is just a custom basically live ISO and installer and it installs everything for you. If I go to, it's gonna eventually go through. But see, I can go and the installer is probably, yeah. So it's a basic installer. It'll update eventually. But yeah, that was kind of my start into that foray. Power off the machine. Is Bridge Linux. And then Manjaro. Everybody's seen Manjaro. Everybody's seen Arch. A lot of people haven't seen Artix. So Artix is basically Arch, but without the system D. And they're removing more and more system D components in some of them. It's not Jobo run levels of system D list, but... It gets the job done. And that's pretty much where I started. Bridge got me comfortable with the command line way more than ever before. And then once I went into Manjaro, it had a lot of cool GUI tools. But then I just wanted that fine granular feel to it. And Manjaro provided that because it was based on Arch still. But Arch had the command line from the get-go. And that's where I learned to really build things. And I still feel like I don't know anything. But yeah, bridge, start, Artix, currently finish. If you liked the content, if you enjoyed it, if you think I deserve it, like, comment, subscribe, leave any criticisms you have or what have you. I appreciate it. Feed that algorithm, like I said, and I will see you guys in the next one.